There is none besides Him. Neither is there any rock like our God. There is none holy as our Lord, holy as the Lord. There is none holy. Almighty, we thank you. We worship you. We give you praise. Thank you for another time in your presence, another day that you have made, a day you are rejoicing in, a day we are glad to be in. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your spirit. Thank you for open heavens. Thank you, Lord God, because indeed you are a good God in, 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 to us. You say be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. As we continue your word, Lord Almighty, continue to open our eyes to your word daily, continues to speak to us, continue to Speak to our minds at every point in time in the mighty name of Jesus. Let our eyes be opened. Let us arise. Let us shine. Let our lives shine and men will see us and glorify our Father, which is you in heaven. We thank you, Lord. We worship you. As we go into your word today, as we start discussing, teach us what we need to know. Open our hearts to know what you want us to know in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us today. Marvelously help us. In Jesus' almighty name we have prayed. Let's sit down. Amen. Good morning, church. So we are going to continue with what we did last week. And who can remind us the topic for last week? Treasures from heaven. Except, I don't want Sister to talk. Who can remind us the topic? Sister Kwe, please don't talk. Who can remind us of the topic? Arise, not arise and shine. <laughs> arise, shine. Thank you very much. Part one. So we are still going to continue part two today. So we can just quickly give us an overview of what we did last week. Just this brief overview. A summary like we used to do when we were in secondary school back then, in high school, in um, English. When we want to do our English work, exam, they tell you summary. Is a, there's a part that is called summary. I don't know whether they still do it now. So we yeah, are supposed to summarize whatever comprehension or whatever passage we are giving. So give us a quick summary, a quick overview, or an executive summary, as we say in business language. I'm waiting. If not, we will not proceed. Well, yes, sir. Please give us, give um, Pastor Wabolade a mic. Praise the Lord. Who else has another um, a takeaway from last week? Or is it that the teaching was not so nice? That's why you do not remember. Oh, oh. <laughs> My friend, you know yourself. So, yes. No, not your husband, do your own. Yes, it's meant to be a command. Thank you very much. And um, our anchor text last week was, who can remind us? Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3. Praise the Lord. So today, our opening prayer is going to be, Oh Lord, help me to be available for you. Oh Lord, help me to be available for you. So our memory verse, first of all, before we go to into our lesson text, our memory verse is taken from Matthew 5, 16. Let us use um, KJV, please. 
so that we can be in line with what the manual wrote. Matthew 5.16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5.16. Again, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5.16. Praise the Lord. So our lesson text is going to be taken from Isaiah 6, 1 to 8. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. It says, in that year that king... Oh, okay, let someone read it for us, please. Yes, let, give her the mic, please. Mile, please, can you give her the mic? Thank you. In the year that king Isaiah died, I, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it, above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face, and with twain, he covered his feet, and with twain, he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved the voice of him that cried, and, and the house was filled with smoke. Then, I, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean, unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my, mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then, fl then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongue from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thine sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Thank you very much, Sister Odu. Thank you very much. So we go into the lesson introduction. It says, now more than ever, the stage has been set through increased depravity and conscious effort by the world system to get people to turn away from God and his ways for us for us believers to shine bright as beacons to remind people about God and we walk with and, and we walk with him and for him. In a time Oh sorry. <laughs> that is why I am so sorry I forgot my I didn't forget. I draw I mean my I forgot no I forgot my my bag, so just bear with me please. Um, okay, let somebody, can somebody read then? Because I'm sorry, it is a bit too tiny for me. Okay, now more than ever, the stage has been set through increased depravity and conscious effort by the world system to get people to turn away from God and his ways. For us believers to shine bright as beacons to remind people about God and his kingdom and to be a positive reflection of the possibility that possibilities that exist when we walk with him and for him. In a time where the love of many is waxing cold, according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, there is a clarion call from God for believers to arise and make a positive statement about the God they serve. In this lesson, we shall be examining what this clarion call represents, what it means to us as believers, and how we are to go about this divine assignment. Thank you very much, Pastor Lee. So we remember that last week we talked about the clarion call for believers. We are supposed to what? Arise. We are supposed to shine. It's not that we should arise, then shine later. As we are rising, we should shine. And we talked about the, um, the, um, the brightness, the brightness of the Lord coming, to, um, our glory showing, showing forth. Let's read it. Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, 
and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and God to darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the king to the brightness of thy rising. So when we shine, that is when we shine, our glory will come, and people will be attracted towards us. Praise the Lord. So for us to, today, we are, be, we are going to be delving more into what we're supposed to do as children of God, as believers, how we are supposed to serve him. It is not a, a it, it, it's supposed to be a command. It is not just a talk or not, not just um, something we're just admonishing people to do. God has commanded us to arise and to shine. It's not just a saying, not just an admonition, but a commandment this time around. Praise the Lord. So, for our text review, like we said, Isaiah 6, from verse 1 to 8. We know Isaiah was a man of God. Right from time, he had always been very, you know, a man of God, very vocal, always telling the people this, this, don't do this, don't do that, and all, all that and all that. But in this case, we now saw how Isaiah himself saw how he was in the presence of God. Isaiah probably must have been thinking, ah, I'm a very good person. I've been preaching, I've been doing this, I've, my light is shining, I'm, I'm, I'm rising, I'm doing this. You know, he must have felt, I mean, he's a prophet of the people. And he, he, he has the word of God in him. He tells us about the word of God. He, he, he tells people what is wrong, what is right. But now, even with that, God decides to have mercy on him and tell him how he really is. And we all, from the Bible text that we read, we all saw how he said, ah, woe unto me. I thought I was a good person, but really I'm a bad person. So Prophet Isaiah had an encounter with God. So for us to rise, for us to shine, for us to do the work of God, first thing first, we have to have an encounter with God. In verse 1 to 4, we saw how, um, let's, let's open it please, Isaiah 6, 1 to 4, let it be on the screen so that we can be referring to it from time to time. Isaiah 6, yes, 1 to so it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Two. Above it, um, Ari, please, could you? Sorry. <laughs> Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he did fly. Three. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, for, and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. So that is Isaiah's encounter with God. I'm sure that was his first encounter. He had been a prophet of God. We all know that. Even before this encounter with God, he had been a prophet with God. He had been preaching. He had been telling people, admonishing people of what to do and all that. But I guess this is his first real, real encounter with God. And God showed him how he was. So before we can arise, before we can shine, before we can do the word of God, we have to have an encounter with God. We have to have an encounter with God. And how do we have this encounter with God? What are the things? How, I mean, things can lead people to encounter God. So many people some. Sometimes it could be illnesses, it could be God just having mercy, you are good, you are fine, and God just decides to appear to you. Or maybe through the scriptures, you, you read the scriptures, or you could even be a Christian, born again Christian, so to speak, and filled with the spirit of God. But that encounter, really, you haven't had with God. And once we have that encounter, it is bound to change us drastically. Turn, it's a bit, a bit turning around. So... He saw himself. Question. Yes, please. I'm, I'm glad you actually mentioned that. How do? What do we do to encounter God? Because mm. as you were reading that scripture, what I was thinking was Paul. 
Mm. You know, the way he encountered God. He, because after that experience, he did he shine didn't change. Yes, for exactly. Christ. And I'm like, so when we encounter God, like, are there, because, like he said, are there things we do? Sometimes, is it that we don't even do anything, but God is saying, that is the person I want to use. use. So how does that play, like, fit into that question? How do we encounter God? Or... Do we need to actually do anything? Of course, God is sovereign. He can decide what he wants to do with whoever. So how do we balance Yes, that? let's throw the question open. How do we encounter God? You remember Moses? He was tending the sheep. He was minding his business, JJ. And he saw some strange sights. He was like, ah, how can this bush be burning? No smoke, nothing, and it's burning. The leaves are still fresh, you know? And he turned aside to look at, to look at it. And of course... Um, God, he encountered that God then, and that was when his life changed. Yes, Pastor Balaji. Okay, I think just um, the two people that we have spoken about briefly, we mentioned Paul, we mentioned Isaiah, right? The uh, correlation that I see between both of them is that they were imperfect men. Mm. However, they had a zeal in them, right? In the case of Paul, in his heart of hearts, he was a God good was man. Working for God, God yes. And fighting God's enemies and killing them. Mm. Right? So there was a zeal. There was a heart after God. Whether it was properly channeled or not, he wasn't perfect, but he had a zeal to do God's will. Mm. In the same vein, Isaiah, too, imperfect as he was, he thought he was perfect. He thought he was warning the people against God's sin towards God. So there that. was still that zeal. Mm. So I think. My conclusion from both men as case studies is that God doesn't look for what men look for. He can look deep into these two men, that imperfect as they are, there is a zeal in them to do that which pleases me. Mm. And I think that's the key ingredient for God to seek out a man to say, this is the what one I, I want, want to use. use. Okay. You can also correlate that with David. You know, David was... No, 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 that's, no we, are, we are discussing. Yes, sir, Pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, you mentioned uh, Moses. Yes. And that when, when the bush was burning, mm. and uh, he got an instruction. Mm. He said, stand aside. I mean, uh, pull off your, your shoes, shoes the and then look at this. I mean, he got some instruction. Mm. I think it's, um, we sh- I, want, I also want us to look at it from the, from the hindsight of instruction. Mm. The situation might happen, you might be in the best place, but then if you don't have the instruction, you don't have the proper guidance to do what is right, it will not happen. Mm. Um, these, um, the Aga, the other wife of Abraham, was in a particular place. The son was about dying for lack mm. of water. Mm. But there was a river, there was a river just by the side, she didn't know. Mm. God had to Open intervene, yeah. ask her to look by the side, mm. and then so that she can get the water to save the baby. Mm. So in this particular case, if we look at, at this Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3, the first thing is arise. Mm. Arise, then thereafter, there is a shine. Arise, in this circumstance, I want to take it, Mitchell, position yourself. There is a particular position which you have to assume in order for the shining to take place. So, one thing we should take from this is that uh, we should always listen to God. We should always listen to God's direction. Maybe if it, uh, I mean, maybe it needed also to, apart from, it might be that you need to sit down in order to shine. Mm. But in this particular case, God is saying, arise, shine. And then the after the position yourself, the way I want to look at it is to say, also when you say shine, it is to reflect the light that is around you. Mm. If you don't position yourself appropriately in that particular place that God wants you to be, you will not be able to shine. The meaning of shine is to illuminate. And uh, when we're coming this morning, my wife was doing something in the car, and then (laughs) there was light. I mean, we passed by some place, eh? (laughs) <laughs> and it affected us. Ah, you saw that. So, if there is a particular position you will be mm. where the light will actually kick in. Mm. So, first thing, 
position yourself, that is arise. The second thing is to shine. Now it says, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So all of this thing is there. Position yourself and then begin to illuminate that light that has come. It is possible for the light has come, for the light to be there and then you are not illuminating it because you have not positioned Don't yourself. So. so I'm just looking at it now from reverse Flip psychology. Side. Now, mm. the next thing is that you say, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. That means there is a particular darkness. Not, it didn't say darkness shall cover the earth. He said, the darkness. Then he goes on again to say, and gross darkness. Those people, there, are, there are different levels, of different darkness. types of darkness that, were, that is possible. Mm. He said, the darkness shall cover the heart. That's a specific darkness. Then he goes on to say, gross darkness, the people. He says, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. Mm. So it means that the person being asked to shine was not shining before. So if you are not shining before, and you need to shine. If you are not in a particular position in which you think you should be, mm -hmm. and you want to go to that position, you need to listen to God. God so says. because God will then direct you where you should position yourself, what resources are around for you, for you to be able to mix the two so that you can get to where you're going to. The, the, the summary of my message is that it's an instruction. Of course, you are also free to take it if you want to get to where you are going. But then when you take that instruction, you position yourself as appropriate to be able to take advantage of what God has provided. And God can provide all of these things if you are not in the right place mm -hmm. and you are not doing the right thing, you will not be able to shine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So also, I want to ask a question from what um, Pastor Lee has just said. So we have seen instances of people that were not positioned, that were not even that don't even know anything and God using them. As in, they were not positioned rightly. They were not um, even thinking about it at all. They were not even, it wasn't even in their minds. They do not want, I mean, not, they were just on their own, doing their own thing and God using them. So what do you say to that? Sir? God wants him to be, to be exactly. able to get that. Yes. That particular position in which they are, they are in which they are not doing anything. Mm. Maybe that is the right position to be able to. Yeah. But then, yes. usually, let me just say, usually, maybe not all the time. There is no absolute um, way that you can say God does this all the yes. time. Yes, you will always have to do something. The blind Bartimaeus had to do something. I want to say that I want to believe that it's by the inspiration of God somehow that he had to shout. Even yes. when they ask him to keep quiet. The woman with the issue of blood mm -hmm. had to do something. Mm. There are those steps of faith. That when, so when you use the example of Moses, for example, he said he should step aside. See this thing. Then he had to do some very dangerous thing. He dropped his rod. Yes. It became a snake. A snake. Then God told him to pick it up. Not by just pick it up. By the tail. <laughs> pick it up by the tail. If mm. you want to pick up a snake or if you want to do anything by the snake, you, you aim for the head. Mm. Pick it up by the tail. Picking it up by the tail means that the, the snake can come. So, by guidance. So, there is always one thing that somebody has to do, which mm. has to do which has to do with uh, That with we align faith. with God. Even going to meet Pharaoh, mm. where you have been a fugitive and you have been labeled as a murderer and they are waiting for you. You now go there to say you want to release your people. It's, um, <laughs> it's a major. <laughs> yes. I'm coming. Let's her then. You. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, every time I read this particular passage, um, it starts by saying, in the year that King Desire died. Mm. And for me, what ministers to me there is sometimes something needs to leave your life. That's There's an obstruction that has from to encountering way. God. Yeah. So God, by his mercy, by his grace, he can remove it for you. Or you can, as an act of faith, identify that, you know, this particular behavior is not in line with God mm. and you need to set it aside Side. so that you can encounter God. The other thing that you are talking about, whether, you know, like, you, are, you don't even know where you are standing and God still, <laughs> you know, like, encountering you. And what comes to my mind is the story of Jacob. 
this was a man who even from birth was a usurper because mm -hmm. he was trying to be the first and he wasn't the first and he kept you know trying every time to take that blessing of being the first and he took it by guile and escaped and what I find um, intriguing is that he, he, after he ran away and he was in that wilderness, the Bible describes the place that it was full of rocks. It was a hard place. Mm. I don't know what his state of mind was, you know, like, you know, knowing fully well what he had done. But he was, and the Bible said he used a rock as a, as a pillow. Mm. And whilst he slept, he dreamt and he saw angels coming. Uh, and when he woke up, he said, I didn't even know God was in this place. Mm. So sometimes, like uh, my sister said earlier, God is sovereign. Mm. He will use every Anything. and every circumstance. But I think everyone has an opportunity to encounter God. But everybody's experience is going to be different. different. Praise yes. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister Okwe, please. Sorry, I just wanted to say two things. Um, when Pastor Niyu was speaking, what came to mind? So for Arise, I think that one of the things that we forget is that it takes a little bit of diligence to get to that point of arising. So it's just like you're comfortable where you are or you're down. That's really what arises. You're down, you need to get up. You have to be diligent, courageous to get up. You know when you wake up in the morning and you're just exhausted and you still have to get up and go to work? So to arise, you need that diligence and, you know, to even get up. Then for shining, there's a book, um, well, Elder Billy Akoni, The Vessel God Uses. God uses people that have something in them that is worth using. And so, for example, Moses, there was courage there that even though Moses was a stammerer, God had seen that as something that he could use. Without courage, I don't know, maybe the children of Israel will still be where they are. Because who would pick up a snake, right? Who would speak to a rock? No, who would do that, right? So it took that courage, that just that little bit of courage that Moses had. So we as human beings, as children of God, to arise, that diligence needs to be there. You know how they say it started from the bottom, now we are here. Nobody flew to the top. We all started from the bottom and we stood up because of, is that courage that propelled us to want to get up from the bed, even when you're receiving no's, you keep getting up and you keep trying. So I think those are the foundation, that's the foundation really of what we're speaking on. If we're not ready to be courageous, if we're not ready to just deal with the battles daily, you will not get to the point of shining because you have not arisen. Praise God. I just wanted to add that. Yes, yes, sir. I was mm. expecting Professor Aremu to jump in on, uh, on, the, on, this, on this trend. I mean, as Pastor Neil was speaking about positioning, I, I, it took me back many years to my physics class in optics, right? When we were studying reflection. So, and that's, that's very instructive in 60 verse 1. For thy light is come. So, the conclusion is, our shining is of, is, we have no, there's nothing we do to cause the shine. Like Pastor rightly said, the light is there already. When we do those experiments in physics, we have to position a mirror, a parabolic mirror, to a place where it has the highest heat to burn through a paper. So it's really, the more you position to the right place, the more the intensity. I don't know if who did that assignment where you have to do until you start burning the paper. That's where the parabolic mirror is at, uh, the highest, uh, whatever. So it's so, it's so interesting how even in sciences we can see God. And that's what is happening here. It's really about the light is come already. But it will be useless until you are rightly positioned to where you can get the intensity to achieve a result. Yes, yes, yes. So, so it's not about us. We should not bother about the result that will happen. My key takeaway this morning is I should be more concerned about my positioning towards the light. Because it is my positioning towards the light. And the more you position to the right spot on the light, the intensity of the light we determine your angle of reflection, right? We determine the intensity of the light that you bounce off. Mm -hmm. So, God is great. Okay, I know that time is, is of the essence. But you know what? 
what we're actually saying, all that you have said, mm. he's in the first section of this. I've just looked at it. Yes, he's already, already there. He's so already there. So we're just, we are just discussing <laughs> we are what just, is our exactly. already there. But it's good that yes. we have that inspiration and mm. then we are now able to even look at what is on paper yeah. to use it to validate what we're yes. talking about. But just, um, just to buttress what uh, Pastor Paul has just said, do you know that the sun, you know, at some point the sun is hot and sometimes it is cold. Mm. It's not as if God sits down somewhere and switches it off. No. It's it is positioning our the positioning earth. that determines if we have darkness. So the movement of the heart, somewhere around the side, that is, I'm talking about physics or geography, geography. now. This is science. So it is the positioning of the heart vis-a-vis the sun that determines the kind of heat or the kind of Light. sun mm. that we have. Mm. So this further buttresses the fact that uh, the positioning yourself mm. will determine mm. how much light you have. will spark exactly. and how much heat, how much energy. Do you know that they use the sun? Somebody, um, there's, that's Archimedes theorem, I remember. He used the sun, the positioning of the sun vis-a-vis some reflection to destroy a whole ship. Mm. To show that if you, yes. It is, I'm talking about science now. <laughs> Archimedes, A R C H I M E D E S, or maybe Archimedes or whatever. He used. He was one that brought up that thing that he used maybe a mirror or something like mm-hmm. that, positioning against the sun and use it to destroy mm-hmm. a ship. That means there is a lot of power there Intensity. if we're in the right position. But mm-hmm. what we really need is for God to be able to show us where to mm-hmm. stay, mm-hmm. what to do, yes. part time. So it's going to depend on what you are doing part time. Time. So you have to be at the right place at the right time. So the Bible talks about there's a time for everything. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, everyone. So we just quickly continue. I mean, we've talked about most of the things we're supposed to talk about today. So we're just thinking about we're just talking about the the prerequisites that one needs to be properly positioned so as to God to use us. Then the second thing here is. um, Talk about the encounter with God, and we have really, really flogged that issue. That Isaiah saw himself as unworthy in the presence of God. If not for God, where will we be? We might think we are holy, we are big, we are this, we are. We work for God. With I mean, it's even written in the Bible that says that um, at the end day, at the end times, when God comes and all that, you say, ah, "I have worked for you. I have done this for you. I have done that." God will say, "Depart from me." I do not know you, workers of iniquity. And probably there will be big pastors, you know, that have been working miracles and all that, that people have seen. But God is God that ultimately knows the hearts. Praise the Lord. So, so here, you see that um, Isaiah saw himself as unworthy in God's presence. That is when God decided to, I'm coming please, decided to show him who he really was. Don't think because you are big, you quote the Bible, you are a strong man of God, you work miracles, you do all that. When God will show you who you really are, that you know your worth. Yes, um, Brother Femi. Um, right. So, um, <laughs> I think um, just in addition to what um, Pastor May and the rest have said, um, arise is what I would just start with. When you're rising, it looks like it's, it's an upward position or you're looking out for. Uh, that also brings you to the context of... Um, for me, time, um, because I don't know. I know I've spoken about this before. In physics, you know, you've had you have the analog clock and you have the you have yeah, the atomic time. clock, right? Um, and that's as you go higher, you notice time reduces for you. Um, and I have tried to explain that before. When you notice people that travel more in the air, uh, look younger. Uh, yeah, if you spend more time on the air, um, you would. But I, I, well, I don't know if you know that, but if <laughs> you notice people that go to the people that go to space literally don't change; they don't age. So this is at the context of what you should understand. Yeah. So um, what I'm trying to say is, yes, arising itself has a benefit for you as an individual, mm. right? Um, so you should know that once you're arising, it's it's simultaneous with you shining also, because you would always the useful look would always be there. You yeah. always look rejuvenated. And yeah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Pastor Spemi. 
So the third prerequisite here is God's mercy intervened. His iniquity was taken away and his sin purged by fire. And of course, was, like we said before, he had seen himself as unholy, as bad and all that, that uh, woe is him and all that. And God's mercy intervened. So that means that no matter where we are, no matter how, even if we are wrongly positioned, God's mercy can still intervene. No matter what, if you have seen people that are in the deepest of the deepest of the deepest deep, and God's mercy still arose for the person. Rahab, exactly. We can't say that Rahab, maybe she was even positioned to be a, exactly, to live by the world, to be a, no, no, even to be, to, to be a whore, and men would usually come to her, and those men came to her, to her in. She was positioned to, you know, sorry, first John. Oh, question, please. Uh, sorry. Who defines if you are shining? How do you know if you are shining? Yes. Who defines who is shining? Yes, please. I, I mean, at the end of the day, there are certain things that are incontrovertible. Right? Mm. If light has arrived, if there is a shine, like, like Pastor said, driving to work this morning, I mean, to church this morning, the sun was right in your face. You can't deny it. You can't dispute it. You will feel it. Right? So, so for me, really, it is God, ultimately, who is the judge of all our actions or service unto him. However, even as human beings, because we carry a part of God in us, mm. There's something in all of us, except we want to deceive ourselves. When a genuine man of God, using the power of God, is operating, there is a total acceptance. As opposed to, some people are doing certain things that look like shining, but there is a conflict within your spirit. Is this God? Is this not God? More often than not, it is not God. But when it is pure, when it is from God, at least I'll speak for myself. It can be disputed. I don't even feel a doubt. Mm -hmm. But when there's a mixture or distorted signal, you have a struggle accepting or this thing, yeah, I see these miracles, but is this God? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, but I think ultimately it's the spirit of God, of God in us mm -hmm. that, that will attest to any light that the, is that shining, witness, whether it is yes. of God or it's a strange fire. Yes. Yes, Pastor Tenny. Uh, I'll come to... Okay, Deborah, then um, Ari, then Pastor Tenny, please. And when Pastor Pear asked that question, the first thing that came to my mind was the song, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and praise your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, Matthew 5. So I think, for me, that song coming to my head made me know that, like, if you are truly, like, shining, mm. like, your works, will, like, men will be able to see those works in you and in your life and be able to praise God for it. Mm -hmm. So I think the same thing that Pastor Bolade also said. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing that Pastor Bolade also said of, like, if your light is shining, there's something that even mm. as children of God that we recognize. So mm. I think that your light's shining, like, when light is shining within you, there's there's ways that men you will people see, around you will know see yeah. those works. Yeah. Yes, Ari. Very quickly before Pastor Tim. Our time is fast spent. So there's one thing that Pastor Pe said that really um, resonated with me. That whole thing about arising. When you think about Moses, he had to climb up the top of a mountain. So that is like a form of arising. There's mountains that we will have to climb in order to even get to the position that we're supposed to be, like Pastor Nee said. But there is no shining without God. Like, we don't have a light. Like, God, God is the light. God is the source. And in order for Moses to even continue to continuously shine, he had to go and dwell in the presence of the mm -hmm. Lord and come back down and dwell in the presence of the Lord. We have nothing. We have nothing outside of God. We're nobody. We're dust. But when we return back to the Lord continuously, and we have to go empty. Moses had no, he had, he had no, he needed instruction from the Lord. He needed something from the Lord. So we have to come as vessels, being prepared to receive from him, mm -hmm. and then get filled with his light. Once that light is gone, we still have to go back, because the light can't dwell in us. God is light. He can only 
dwell within himself. We can't contain that light whatsoever. So we should always like humble ourselves and remember, I am nothing without God. I have nothing. Mm. My light belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, if I can even call it my light. Praise the Lord. Okay, Pastor Lee has a contribution. Okay, <laughs> because she said she was, was like, okay. Okay, I just wanted to take us back to Genesis 1. Yes, ma'am. Verse 4, verse 3. Then God said, let there be light. Mm. And light began to shine. So there was a process of that, mm. of being lit. And the verse 4 said, he saw the light and he knew that it was good. I think just speaking to what the question um, Pastor Kwe was saying was that, how do you know that you're shining? There's a, knowledge, there's a place of knowledge, you know, of knowing what is right and what is wrong. Mm. God has given us the Holy Spirit, the spirit of discernment. Mm -hmm. Not a space from what Deborah's daddy said. That <laughs> <laughs> Sister Deborah's daddy said, not from the place of knowing that your life is better, or not from a place of proud, pride, but a place of knowing or discerning that what I'm involved in is a good thing mm. and what I'm associated with is good. Mm. And once you associate with goodness, you're invariably you're associating with light. I don't know if we want to put it in that context. context. She's not even yeah. here to answer. Listen. Pastor Nui, do you have something? You were raising yes, up. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 verse 16. <laughs> <laughs> Genesis 1.16. Genesis 1.16. The Bible says, and God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. Mm. And the lesser light to rule the night. Then, he still went on to say, the Bible still went on to say, he made the stars also. So, we have a greater light that rules the day. Then, a smaller light that rules the night. Then, the stars. That means the smaller light that we're talking about that rules the night is not the stars. It's probably, most likely, the moon. Hmm? Mm. What I want to say is that there is probably no ultimate position that you want to say is the, is the, is the, is, is the peak of being, of uh, the light shining. But very importantly, you have to be in the will of God yes. for you to be able to say that um, you are shining because it might actually be dark now. Just like now, Jesus, at this point in time, was experiencing a lot of darkness at this mm. point in time. Mm. But Easter Sunday is coming. It's a process to get to Easter Sunday. If he doesn't go through Good Friday, he will not get to Easter Sunday. Mm. Meanwhile, Good Friday is pitch black. But since it is in the will of God, it is actually the shining. He's shining even though he was in the grave. Mm. Because the grave could not hold him captive. But then he's still, he, so if he was shining on Good Friday, it's actually not the light. It's not, not where God wants him to be. There's still something further. Huh? So, so at times you might see somebody that is doing good, that is fine or what have you, and everything is okay, so to say. But that is not the ultimate yes, light. Yes. Now, let me also add one thing. That was the last one, sorry. <laughs> In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 19. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 19. The Bible says there that the sun shall be no more thy light by day. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. Mm. Now, this is the clincher. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God, thy glory. Amen. So as much as we can situate ourselves into where God wants us to be part time, I think that is what it means to shine. Me, human beings might not see it. You might be going through a dark patch. But that dark patch is for you to be able to, if it is in the will of God, is for you to be able to get to that ultimate yes, that is going on. And the Bible says that we should work out to make our salvation secure every day. So, there is, a, there is a process to it. There are so many things, but let us not say this particular thing, because the Bible is saying that the sun, even the sun, is not the one that will give you 
the that will give you the light, that will say that, it's your, that you have the light. But God is really a source of light. That's no, but I, mean, I will not let Amen. you talk because our time is fast spent. Sorry? Yes. So I will not let you, letting our time be, we are going to, because we have overflogged this issue, we all know it, and our time is fast spent. So letting us be just a result of our acting, result of our shining. And what will, what will happen when we start shining? It says men will be drawn to God through the excellence that our lives produce. God will be glorified. There will be a transfer of resources from the world to the church for kingdom advancement. It's in Isaiah 63. That is what we saw. There will be a massive deliverance and healing of souls, Matthew 10, 5 to 8. There will be a dominant, a dominance of the kingdom of God upon the earth through biblical discipline of na- discipline of nations across all sectors, Matthew 28, 18 to 9. That is what God said. But what is the conclusion of this whole matter? Let us read Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes, please. 13, 13 or 14? Let me see. 13, 13, 13. Yes, he says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, that is the utmost, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That is the whole duty of man to be in his will. If you fear God, you will be in his will. If you fear God, you will not do what God says you shouldn't do. If you fear God, you will be rightly positioned at every point in time. Because God himself will direct and order your steps. And he says you should keep his commandments. Same thing we are talking about. For this is the whole duty of man. Praise the Lord. Exactly. Please God. Exactly. That is the whole essence we have to. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, Sister Amabalanle, please pray for us. Before, no, sorry, before we pray, Pastor Nehi has something to before say. Before Sister Amabalanle prays for us. Please, I want everybody's attention. There are, there are some people inside there. There are people doing all sorts of things outside and um, all of that. I just want to admonish each and every one of us. This is the service. The time that we learn the word of God, the time that we have the opportunity to discuss it, the time we have the opportunity to ask questions and let it be answered. If you have issues, this is the time that we can actually, this is the time to learn. What we do during service is what the person holding the microphone directs you to do. You can hear the word, the one that you don't understand there or the one that is shrouded a bit. You cannot break me in the middle of the sermon and say, please, uh, that one re explain it. No, you can't. But here we can talk about it. Can, the bottom line is that, can I please enjoin every one of us, please, walk towards being part of Sunday school. My experience, I was an usher. And I loved usher, anything I do in the church anyway. And I was head usher. Then our pastor told us one day, they said, you know what? You can't just be in one department. That he wants everybody to be in two or three departments. You must get other parts of what the church does, other parts of work in the church. So I just looked around. What else am I going to do apart from being usher? I can't be quiet. I don't have the talent. (laughs) So I joined Sunday school. And in our Sunday school, what we used to have is that people will have Sunday school preview on Saturday ahead of Sunday. So during Sunday school preview, oh God, <laughs> you have people like Pastor Volade. <laughs> you know, we have many um, assistant God that, are, that they know these things well. They've been... Uh, some of we just got born again because we had difficulty in life, and then we came to church. There are some that have been born again since primary school, and so when they got to university, they were in charge of fellowship. They did everything and everything, and so they knew these things. They know how to break it down, and because we are having this, and then our Sunday school preview because it was central. It wasn't just 
uh, parish. Everybody within the zone will come. So we'll have a Sunday school preview class of teachers from across the zone. We have about 30 people, 40 people discussing the Bible. And people who already know this, and they'll bring different perspectives to this, and they will talk about it, do all sorts of things. So you will learn a lot from it. And they also, not just that they are going to discuss it, they also want to pontificate that this one, I know. Then they already told us that before you come for Sunday school preview, you would have gone, you would have sat down at home, looked at it, prepare, and then you will come with your perspectives and all of that. That, for me, was the time that I blew. That is the blowing time for me, really, because I learned from Sunday school preview. Not even Sunday school itself, because I learned a lot because people were churning out different parts of the Bible, and I learned. So I became a Sunday school teacher. After becoming Sunday school, because as at that time I become head usher, and so I can't just be just sitting down there. So they started getting me to teach. Because I had to teach, I had to learn at home. I had to attend Sunday school preview. I had to participate in it, and then. I got, and the entrance of the word, the Bible says, brings light. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 3. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse the Bible says that when the word came into me, the spirit came into me. When the word, so it is the word that is actually perhaps the most important thing that we should learn. We come thereafter, you have to praise God. You need to praise and worship God anyway. But then the one that will empower you for the business of life, which you can apply whenever anything comes up, it is the word. In summary, I want to enjoy you. Please come early enough so that you can be part of Sunday school, so that you can grow thereby. It is when you have that word that you can grow. And it is when you are growing that you can actually manifest your God-given potential, your God-given destiny. In Christendom, that is when you can really arise, and that is when you can really shine. God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Ney. That's a good admonition for every one of us. So, Sister Moby, quickly, in one minute or half a second, pray for us. Yes. Let's pray. Our Father and our Lord, we just want to thank you for today's um, Treasures from Heaven Sunday School. We thank you for the admonition to arise and shine. Lord, we pray for grace that we would all know this, we would all remember this even after this session, that we will be rightfully positioned so that we can fulfill, do your will in Jesus' name. We commit the rest of this service into your hands. We say, Lord, that, Lord, we will not miss out on anything that you have for us here. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.